So for the past few months, I've put a good amount of time into speedrunning Mario Kart Double Dash, specifically in the time trial part of it. Before anyone asks, uh, yes, I am currently am, I'm in a jail cell, but, d but don't worry. My background in speedrunning has always been much more in the realm of full game runs as opposed to individual levels, and while full game runs are generally more accessible and better for streaming, Sometimes it's nice to just throw on some music or a podcast and grind away at time trials. Double Dash has alarmingly deep mechanics that require extensive practice and dedication to truly master. I mean, hell, you'll still see me mess up these things known as mini turbos left and right, and it, I mean, it's not my fault though, it's just that my, my controllers are broken and... Okay, shut up! Needless to say, I've gained innumerable respect for the top Double Dash players. They just have such mechanical consistency that I'm pretty sure I won't have the passion nor the talent to ever reach. Uh, however, I have at least become ranked in the top 100 players for time trials, but what exactly does that mean? Where are these ranks listed and how does a ranking system for overall time trials even work? A lot of times when I stream myself doing attempts, I'll get questions like, where the f*** is Mario Sunch? Or, wait, hold on, I'm, uh, I'm not sure that one got in there. Uh, I'll get asked things like, what do you mean by flap? Or what the heck is a hero A or a titan D? Or myth A. Well, in this video, I hope to clear up several of these kinds of questions and shed some light on the ranking system of Mario Kart Double Dash. You would probably think to check speedrun.com for the time trial leaderboards, right? <laughs> Wrong! What you will find are leaderboards for various cups, but I'll get back to that later. Many speed games that primarily compete on the individual level basis will host leaderboards on their own personal websites. So I mean, where would Double Dash host their leaderboards? MarioKart.com? Well, uh, actually no. Obviously, it'd be hosted on MarioKart64.com backslash mkdd. Heading over to the website, you'll immediately see a banner and lots of words. Upon reading some of these words, you'll realize it's some kind of news section. This is where you can read about the improvements people have made to their personal records over the past few days. These news updates have been posted every single week since the beginning of 2004, almost exclusively by the same man. But like, none of that really matters, right? Like, where do I find those rankings, cuh? Well, just head to the sidebar and click on MKDD Rankings as f AF stands for Average Finish and is represented by a number that goes in the score column. Give me bees, go to F, give me bees, go to F, give me bees. AF is the cornerstone by which players are ranked for not just Double Dash, but any Mario Kart game. Next to the score column is a change column. This shows how much AF a player has either cut from getting new PRs or gained from inactivity, much like I have recently. A possible misconception is that the rankings are always 100% up to date. This is not exactly the case, because actually, the rankings only reflect the most recent update. Let's take a look at the number one player in the world, Mike better known as Goomba. As of the making of this video, he appears to have an AF of 1.125. Clicking on the extremely small info button will bring us to his personal times page. The AF value represents the average of his ranks for all 32 categories. But wait a minute, 32? Are there four cups in Mario Kart Double Dash I'm not aware of? As cool as that would be, there are only 16 tracks, but each track has two different criteria. A course time, which is the time it takes to complete all three or two or seven laps of each track, and a single lap time, commonly referred to as flap or fastest lap. In addition to AF, there's another metric known as a player's average rank rating, or ARR. Average rank rating is based on those weird words I brought up earlier, known as standards. Both categories of every track have unique standards that correlate to specific milestones. And where average rank rating comes into play is the number associated with each standard. Every improvement by one standard will net you a lower average rank rating on that track by one point. Out of the over 1,000 players who have times for each category, only the best of the best will ever reach the highest standards. Theoretically. Let me give you a brief history. Standards were first introduced to Double Dash in May of 2004. Some of the best players of the time got together and arbitrarily agreed on where the time cutoff should be for all 32 categories. The resulting scheme included 26 standards. You'd work your way through the four letters of Beginner, Intermediate, Advanced, Expert, Hero, and Titan. When you've really mastered a track, you would finally reach the crowning achievements of the God Standard. 
This is the highest honor you can achieve in a kart game. If you reach this rank, you'll go down in the history books. Is what probably would happen if these god standards didn't become obsolete. In 2005, the discovery of a mechanic known as A-Tech would change these standards forever, but not totally. Everything from newbie to Titan A stayed the same, while what was previously God became Titan Plus. Then an entire new section above that called Myth, and even Myth Plus, and then the new God standards. As a bit of future proofing, plus 1 to plus 10 even beyond that. These standards, created way back in 2005, have remained exactly the same ever since. Impressively, they still hold up pretty well, with some pretty extreme exceptions. So I would say that I'm currently around a Titan C level player, but I do have one God plus 10 standard, and so do 55 other people on Baby Park Flap. Get here with Baby Park Flap. Sometime in 2016, a strat was developed that once you learned it and managed to get it pretty cleanly on both corners, then boom, you did it. Way to, way to go, me, it's an 8 second IL. <laughs> Clearly, this strategy was unforeseen, and that's understandable, but there's also some issues on the other extreme. The highest standard ever reached in Rainbow Road 3 lap is God Plus 3. To get a God Plus 10, you would have to achieve a sub 253 time, and that's, yeah, it's not gonna happen. It's Rainbow Road for Christ's sake. So will these imbalances in the standards be updated to meet modern knowledge? Possibly, but we'll just have to wait and see. Between reaching the next standard, or reaching a certain rank, or passing a certain player, there are a ton of motivating factors. Now's a good time to talk about a controversial version difference between PAL and NTSC, and that is of course the topic of 50Hz versus 60Hz. 50Hz is the same exact game at 5 6 the speed of 60Hz, including the in-game timer. The same exact times can be achieved in both frequencies, but it could be argued that 50Hz is easier due to being slowed down. As it stands, both frequencies are completely legal on the player's page. Despite that, it is way more common these days for players to use 60Hz. So what's really going on here? Are people intentionally handicapping themselves? Well, sort of. Allowing 50Hz was totally understandable in a bygone era before iPhones and stuff. Not every European had access to a TV that was 60Hz compatible. But over 15 years later, in 2019, there's really no such excuse. As it stands, 50 is allowed, but there's kind of an unwritten lower level of respect. Andrew Math, a former Double Dash World Champion, is famous for pushing the notion that 60Hz is completely viable at top level play. In fact, every currently active top top 10 player uses 60, while the old school legends mainly stuck to 50. Bottom line, you can play whatever version you like, but if you decide to use 50 when you have immediate access to 60, prepare to have some fun poked at you. Like with any speed game, there are some rules to abide by. Playing on emulator is highly frowned upon, but technically allowed until you need video proof. I'd say it's fine till you reach around maybe top 50 level, but honestly, if you have the time and dedication to reach top 50, it's a meager investment to just play off a game disc or even USB load the game on a Nintendo Wii with a cheap capture card. Another thing I gotta talk about is shortcuts. There are only competitive leaderboards for non-shortcut runs. You see, Double Dash is an absurdly polished game sandwiched between two rather broken games. In fact, for the first 15 years of the game's life, the Waluigi shortcut was the only known skip in the entire game. That is, until Goomba would discover brand new shortcuts on both Mushroom Bridge and Bowser's Castle in the latter half of 2018. When I say no shortcuts, this doesn't include things like the pool skip in Daisy Cruiser or the shroomless grass cut in Yoshi Circuit. These types of shortcuts are totally fine. And if that seems arbitrary, just think of it as the shortcuts that involve throwing yourself into a death barrier are the ones that are banned. Shortcut leaderboards exist on a separate spreadsheet which don't contribute to a player's ranking. Besides, it'd be kind of ridiculous to rank everyone's 4.5 second flap. That would just be pretty terrible, it wouldn't make sense. Though it is pretty crazy that Bowser's Castle, the second longest track in Double Dash, can be done in under one minute. Faster than even Baby Park will ever be. So while they're not part of time trial rankings, shortcuts are a totally valid part of the game that see a lot more use in full game runs. Yes! Hit me with that 
Good shit. Like I hinted at earlier, categories for each of the four cups and all cup tour are on speedrun.com. For the time being, there is no distinction in shortcut versus non-shortcut in these categories. Mainly because there's only three of them, and the Mushroom Bridge one isn't really RTA viable, so they don't really affect the overall run too much. But here's the thing, very few seasoned Double Dash players actually take cup runs very seriously. Through my own extensive research, I've narrowed down why this is to three different reasons. Way too much luck, way too much RNG, and way too much bullshit. It can be admittedly fun to race other players in these categories from time to time, but at the end of the day, the true competitive nature of Double Dash lies in time trials. One more thing I should cover, and perhaps the most important thing, how do I join? How do I get my name and my times on that big list of names and times? It's a good question because as of this video, it's still a pretty archaic process involving email. Your first submission comes in the form of an email listing your name, country, age, system, and whatever personal records you have. Luckily, beyond this first submission, the submitting process becomes much simpler and should only be done at most once a week. But that is going to do it for this video. Hopefully you found it informative and somewhat interesting. Uh, and somehow I'm not in jail anymore, so that's good. Part of the original ending I had for this video became obsolete because this kind of took a week longer to edit than I expected, but oh well. Also, I should still really invest in some sort of mic stand at some point. The first thing I was going to promote was the finals of the Double Dash Time Trials One Try League hosted by the Global Speedrun Association. That took place at Smash and Splash. It was a super dope event to watch. Just really talented runners going head to head. I would highly recommend checking out the Grand Finals if you haven't. It was a very interesting match. There is, however, an event that I can still shout out, which is Summer Games Done Quick 2019. It's going to feature an all-cups race between the top two players in the world, and also I'm going to be at the event too, so it should be a uh, grand old time. <laughs> so if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I do read every comment that I get, for better or for worse. But anyways, I've been Average Trey. Thank you for watching. Peace.